Good afternoon. I think we're live. Here we are. Good afternoon. I um I am once again thrilled to be here. Spending an hour on Sunday with all of you is just as good as it gets for me. So I'm thrilled that I am here and I'm thrilled that you are here and uh, we'll give it just a couple minutes more for other people to arrive. Good afternoon, Heidi. Hi, Steve. Oh, this is so much fun. You know, it's going to a family reunion with people you actually like. That didn't sound did it. I like my family. I like my family a lot. We don't have to have reunions. In fact, we're having a reunion every Sunday afternoon. Um, we're seeing more of each other now, Zoom, than we ever did before. Because we can all get into one place, that little Zoom room together. And uh, it gives us the opportunity to connect and catch up on what's going on in the week and see how much the grandchildren have grown and um, see how long the beard is getting on, on nuns. Um, that stuff. We girls don't talk about roots. Do we? No, we don't. Um, gosh, it's good to be there. And it's good to be here. So I have two meetings with family on Sunday, as it turns out. Sunday noon with my spirit family and, and Sunday at five with my biological family. And um, Sunday, good, really good. I hope they are for you. I hope that you have created some sort of new rituals, new normal in your life that's even better than it was before. Well, you can honestly say this is better than it was before all of this started. We may not all be like that, but we have the opportunity right now to, to make that happen, to make things different in a good way than they were before the governor said, go in your house, the door from the inside and don't go back out again. I'm grateful for this opportunity, for the chance to stop and think and not running about all of the time. I'm grateful for the newfound energy uh, that I have. I'm grateful most of all for this opportunity to, to be with Sunday and to do what I love to do the most in the whole world. And I hope you are finding those opportunities for yourself. If you haven't yet, start looking. Start looking. What can you do from where you are that you couldn't do before? Do you have more time? What will you do with it? If you're filling that new time up with, um, I don't say wasted stuff because I don't think anything is ever wasted, but with stuff that is not moving you forward, that is not helping you create your dream. Why? I mean, how many games of solitaire can you play? How many old movies can you watch? How many times can you laugh at the same stuff on America's videos. I think, and I'm not saying we have to go into monk mode on this because most of us would be monks if that's what we were cut out to be. What I am saying is that this is a golden opportunity to look at our lives in a new way and be creative in a new way. And I hope you're taking advantage of that. Um, I am, and it's thrilling. It's thrilling to watch what's coming out of all of this. And I want that for you. I want your life to be thrilling, exciting. I want your life to be all that you ever dreamed it might be and more. And saying, well, it's a little late for that. I should have started when I was fill in the blank. What I'm saying to you is it's never too late. It's never too late. You are never too old to do your dream. You may have to do it differently than you originally visioned it, but you're different now than when you were doing the original visioning, aren't you? 
So why not take advantage of that? Let me check over here. Let's see who else is here. Hi, Kirk. How are you? Hello, Susan. How are you, my dear? Susan, can you see the blue, the blue bowl behind me? That's the one you gave me. Thank you. It's been on my dresser, but my dresser just got renovated, repainted, um, renewed. A dresser that I've never really liked is now something I love. But this was on the dresser, and I decided to bring it in here to be with it because I love it so much. I've had it for a long time, thanks to Susan and Maxwell, and uh, and I hope to have it for a good time longer. So let's see. Heidi, did I say hello to you yet? If I haven't, I will now. Um, gosh, the family is gathering. How much fun is this? How much fun is this? Let me look down a little bit and see if I'm missing anybody yet. Hi. It's good to be here. It's really, really good to be here with all of you. I'm loving it. You are. And I want to thank all of you who have taken the trouble. For some of you, it's probably not trouble. For me, it would be trouble. Taken the trouble to forward to, to share the videos of these talks, to send them on to your friends, um, to just post them on your website so that people will see them. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. Let me let you in on, on um, a thought that I have. I was at the Huntington Beach Church of Religious Science, brand new religious science person at, at the church. It was little. It was in a little corner of a shopping center, and it was little. And I watched it grow from little, meaning maybe 100 members, to over 3,000. It was the most amazing thing. And the church just responded to people who were showing up. And the people were showing up because the people that were there were so excited about it and about the changes that it was making in their lives and about what this philosophy could do for them that they kept dragging friends in. I know I was one of the friends. You've all heard that story. I don't need to tell it. And there was one man in particular, a real estate agent, who was really good at roping people in. Really, really good. He was charming. And he went out and would put people up on Sunday morning and drive them to church. And his theory was if you could just get them through the door, what was happening inside those doors would make such a difference in their lives so quickly that they would come back on their own and he wouldn't have to keep schlepping them back. Now, back to golden opportunity in these times. You don't have to get in your car and go get people and drag them to church. You don't have to say the word church. You can share the video and let them decide for themselves. And some will decide that I'm nuts, and some of them will decide that we collectively are nuts, and some of them will stay and come back. And this church without walls, this this meeting, that we have on Sunday will grow without you having to schlep anybody anywhere just by sharing, using that little, when, when the video is all over, using that little button that says share, it will do amazing things. So I really want to thank all of you who have already done that and, and please keep doing it. Um, it will make a difference. I also want to thank those of you who have gone to the Relevant Spirituality website and made donations. We appreciate that as well very much. Um, it keeps us going. It keeps us going. And I appreciate that. But most of all, above all, more than giving money, sharing the videos and telling your friends to watch and inviting them to come along on Sunday, will make a major difference. So I, I encourage you, I invite you, and I thank you for doing that. Hi, Kirk. <laughs> this is just so much fun saying hi to people. And if I say hi to you more than once, it's because it's I love you. 
That's why. So here we are. It is um, Sunday at noon. I'm trying to look at the clock on my computer and it's much too small down in that corner. I think it's about 10 after. So I should probably actually get on with the talk that we intended for today. So let me do that. Take a deep breath, if you will, and um, and think about Let's think about what we came for. You know, I talk a lot. Basically, I talk for a living. So that's my excuse, but I probably would talk a lot anyway. According to some statistics that I found, the average man, before you get upset, hold on, the average man under average circumstances, 30 conversations a day and speaks about 25,000 words. An average, see, I wasn't going to leave us out. The average woman speaks probably 30,000 words, which is enough to fill a 60 page book in one year. And that would be 7,800 pages each by the end of the year. That's a 60 page book a day. 70 books of 800 pages each a year. That's a lot of words, folks. That's a whole bunch of words. Now, grant you that current circumstances have altered those numbers probably considerably because most of us are sitting home and instead of talking to each other a lot, we are yelling at the computer or talking to ourselves, which is fine, which is fine. But current circumstances have also given us the opportunity to spend some time not talking, but thinking. And I'd like us today to think about what we're talking about. Are you still with me? You know I detour sometimes and come back. So just stay with me. We learn here, and we say that we believe that we each have been given a birthright as the child of God that is the power to sit in the middle of our lives and direct the action. And then we get to live with the results that that action, those words, set in motion. That's good news, isn't it? That's really good news. Most of the time. And yet we leave times like this. Moments remembering who we are and what we have. And we go back into our lives and, well, frankly, we speak words that strongly suggest that someone or something else is directing our show. Don't we? Remember driving on the freeway? It's been a while for some of us. Being cut off by that idiot. Remember the movie that would have been a whole lot better without the constant commentary from the woman sitting in back of you? Remember the trip you didn't take because you couldn't leave Fido alone? Remember ever saying, I can't afford it, I can't keep up, I can't go that far, I can't seem to shake this, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And so by the power of your word, you couldn't. By that same power that could have freed you to live the life of your dreams, you were bound. So that's the way that it was. But right now, because of the coronavirus and social distancing, you may not be driving the freeway very much because you're staying home. A pity just when the price of gas could be hitting an all-time low. Oh, well. You're not going to the movies because in most places, the movies are closed. 
And you're likely not planning a trip because you haven't yet figured out where it's safe to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or how it would be safe to get there. But I wonder, I wonder what your self might be in these interesting times. I guess the question really is, are you still thinking and still saying, I can't afford it, I can't keep up, I can't go that far, I can't seem to shake this, I can't, I can't, I can't. See, I think this is what we need to come to learn, is that some things don't change, won't change, unless we consciously change them through our thinking and what we claim for ourselves. What are you claiming? The word, the thought behind it, whether the word is actually spoken out loud or not, always comes first in the creative process. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word is still God. Let me repeat that, because it's really important. The word is still God. The word is still creation. Creation is still in the word. In the whole of life, there is only one spirit, one, one God, one creation. And nothing is just that and then that which it does, that which it creates, made out of that. Now, it's a relatively simple thought to think on in our quiet moments when everything's going well, isn't it? When our maid is behaving and the kids are okay, when we are surrounded by supportive people and supportive thinking, when there is a general consensus that life is good. And it's easy to say, yeah, it's all, it's all God and it's all creative and I'm right in the middle of it, yay! Like Sunday mornings are together. We're when we're in our latest book on cosmic consciousness. But what about the rest of our lives? What about when we're listening to the evening news or looking at our bank statement? What about the last few months? What about yesterday? Do we consciously create from that same infinite mind at those times as well? Are our words just as productive in the day-to-day -day world, in today's world, as they are in our quieter, more centered, more spiritual moments? You bet they are. Just as creative and just as binding. And now all of a sudden that thought is soothing and more frightening, isn't it? It should be. Let's go back to the beginning. Most of us will accept the concept that at one time the universe was without form and void. No big argument. And then the Bible tells us that from the word of God alone, from out of the silence and out of the emptiness, all things were created. Okay, fine, yes, there was likely a big bang of some sorts, but something there was that had to yell go or yell bang. Why would it be any different today? Now there's just more form around. But even with all of this form, aren't there times when 
Our individual lives feel formless and void and empty. And it is still the word that is creative. Still the word that comes out of the emptiness, out of the silence that moves all things from cause to effect, from idea to form. When we begin to understand that, we begin the process of breaking the ties that bind us to that which does no longer serve our lives. Breaking the ties which have limited our lives and kept us from the achievement of our dreams. Breaking the ties. Breaking the ties. Until at last, our lives are what we want them to be. So I've been thinking on that this week. And another thought came to me. We are creatures of habit, are we not? Most of us are very much creatures of habit, some of us more so than others. And normally we usually use that as an excuse. I can't help it, I'm a creature of habit. But what if we could use that habit? What if we could use being a creature of habit to help us recreate our lives. What if? What if? So what if starting today, right now, we began a new series of habits? Habits which can and will change everything. First, let us begin today to take on the simple habit of paying attention. Paying at least as much attention to what we are saying as to what we are planning on saying as soon as that other person shuts up. Whether you are talking to yourself and oh, come on, we all do. Or talking to someone else. What are you saying? What are you claiming? And is that what you want to be true about your life or your world? Is that what you want to have in your life or your world? So first pay attention. What did you just say? What are you about to say? Questions to ask yourself. What did I just say? My thinking about saying. And what does that say about what I really want in my life? If I'm still doing what I used to call water cooler talking, you know, sitting in the office, standing around the water cooler, just kind of going along with everybody, no matter what they say, agreeing about how how bad this is and how bad that is and how hard it is to do this and how broke and blah, 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 water cooler talking. Most of us don't have that office water cooler to stand around anymore, but we can do the same amount of damage, even in our video talking with each other. So, first of all, pay attention. What are you about to say? What did you just say? Notice whether or not that is going to create the world you want to live in. Okay. Now, second, if what you just said, even in the privacy of your own mind, is not what you want to be true about your world, here's what to say next. Here's your new mind. Oops, there's me saying that, and I don't say that anymore. The oops is optional. 
statement. You can follow that statement. There's me saying that, and I don't say that anymore. With words that express what it is you do want to be true about your life and your world. Even if you just do it in your head. Your head being the immensely creative place that it is. Okay, so honestly, I know that sounds simple. And we tend to things have to be hard to be good, but that just isn't so. I can tell you the very phrase changed my life. When I was just learning how powerful my words were, just how creative I could be with my words and my thoughts, when I was just learning that, I realized a lot of the non productive, even destructive, talk that was coming out of me was coming out without me even thinking about it. Just going along to go along, saying what I thought in the moment without thinking about what I was saying. So the hard part is getting to the habit of thinking about what you're thinking about. After that, it gets pretty easy. But I can tell you that phrase, there's me thinking that and I don't think that anymore. There's me saying that, and I don't say that anymore. There's me doing that, and I don't do that anymore. Just the phrase about the speech changed. My internal chatter and my external chatter. And that changed my life. How simple it all really is when you get down to it. Your word is powerful because it is creative. Yes, there's more to it, just that. And I'm going to be talking about more of that over the next week or so. Come back for part two. Because your actions are also powerful and your thoughts are even more powerful. But today, let's deal with your word because that's a big topic. And because they are the easiest place to start. They occupy space in your mind. And once spoken, they occupy space in the world. Physical space. It it is as if in breathing them, in speaking them, you breathe life into them, you give them form, and they become part of your reality. So I'm going to ask you again, what are you claiming? What are you breathing life into? Is that what you want? It may take a little time. Most of us don't pay a lot of attention to what we have to say. But we must. If we are to change our lives and our world. Listen. Listen very carefully to your words. Is that what you really want? When you hear someone say, it's going to be hard. It's a tough world. They have got it all messed up and there's nothing we can do about it. When you hear those words, stop and listen. Whose voice do you hear? If it's yours, you have the power to change what you just said. Is that what you want to affirm for yourself and for your world? If it is, great. If the words that you hear are absolutely affirmative and and, and are in the world that you want it, terrific. But if they aren't, change it. If your world is not what you want it to be, not what you know it can be, Listen for, listen to the words that you're speaking and be immensely aware of how creative they are. Then change them consciously, creatively, immediately change them. Claim a different reality. Don't buy into the mind. 
mindset of those who say that the world is doomed, to those who say that the world is mean, to who, to who say that the world is lost, that we are lost. Don't buy into your own mindset that claims anything less than your personal power to change things in your life. And if you change your life, you will have taken a mighty step in changing the world. And I thank you in advance for that. One of the most powerful words we can speak are those that we speak in prayer. So I invite you to Take a minute with me right now. And close your eyes if comfortable for you or just soft focus so that so that your mind and your thoughts are going in. And listen. In the past, I have been known to speak untruths. In the past, I have claimed lack, and I have found myself lacking. In the past, I have claimed limitation. I have experienced limits. In the past, I have claimed illness. And I have been ill. And I have claimed loneliness. And I have been lonely. And I have claimed chaos. And I have lived in a chaotic world. I invite you now to take a moment and recall those things that in the past, the past being anything before this moment, any time before this time in your life, that you have claimed that has not or does, does no longer serve the magnitude of your life. Say with me, in the past, I have claimed. And say those things prayerfully for the last time. Quiet of your own soul. Speak now that which you have claimed in the past that you no longer wish to accept as your reality. Take a moment. In the past, I have claimed. And you can consider this process an ongoing one as you recognize those things that you have claimed and perhaps still claim without the realization of the power that they have. So know now with me that I have claimed those things. That was me saying that. And I don't say that anymore. I simply don't say that anymore. From today forward, I enter to only truth. The highest truth, God's truth, which is greater than any situations or circumstances. Today, I am completely healed. Today, 
I claim my divine inheritance as a living expression of creation. Today, I accept all that has been given to me. Responsibility and the blessing. Today, I recognize the power of my words to create my world today and tomorrow and for all of the tomorrows to come. Today, I speak only the truth. And the tr truth being set into motion by my words. The truth created by the words that I speak. The truth has made me read. And so it is. You know, if you've been hanging around me any length of time at all, you know that I, I frequently like to quote the Bible verse that says, I said before you, life and death, blessing and curse. Choose life. What a great way to give someone a gift. What a great way. Can you imagine giving somebody a gift and saying, you know, this can create a lot of good in your life or it can really mess it up. Choose good. That's really what it is. I just change the wording a little bit. Here, this can make you successful and healthful and, and joyous and loved. Or it can do the exact opposite. Choose joyous and healthful and loved. Choose the gift in this. Choose the blessing in this. But it can do either one. Fire is a gift. Fire can heat your food, cook your food, warm you on a cold night. It can also burn down your house. Ask me how I know. We live in a neighborhood that was decimated by the Thomas fire. Our house was damaged, but still standing. We know we're blessed. We know what a gift that is. And we accept the gift. Your words are one of the most powerful tools you own. They are a gift. Their power is a blessing. But they can burn down your spiritual house as well if they're used unwisely. Think about what you are saying. Turn your brain on. Don't go on automatic. If you find yourself saying something a certain way because that's the way you've always said it and you suddenly realize now that it's destructive rather than constructive, stop saying it. It may take a little while. Old habits, they say, die hard. And we are creatures of habit. Use the habit to your advantage me saying that and I don't say that anymore pay attention pay attention to how powerful you are don't forget how powerful you are we get into little mindsets don't we if we if we aren't feeling good or it's been a bad day how many bad days in your life have turned out to be good days because things were happening that you didn't realize? What if it's one of those? What if it starts out looking bad because nothing is going the way you thought it was going to go and something wonderful comes of all of that? Hmm? What if? What if? You can create that in your life. Please. 
create that in your life. When you do that, you change not just your world, but my world. And I will be most grateful for that. Thank you very much in advance for your good words, and your kind thoughts, and your amazing actions. Thank you in advance. Now, let's... Oh, technical person over there. Do we have any comments, any questions, anything that I can do something constructive with? Yeah, well, Paul has something he wants. I suggested you bring it to Wednesday night, but he says, one thing I've learned over the past days is three things. Stop doing, keep doing, and start doing. First thing that came up to stop was breaking promises to myself. Could you elaborate? Boy, that's a big thing. I could take that on as a whole Wednesday night thing. In fact, I just may do that. But let's talk about promises to ourselves. That's a really good place to start. Most of us are far better at keeping promises to other people than we are at keeping promises to ourselves. Are we not? I know I am. I know I am. I will bend over backwards. I will do whatever I have to do to keep a promise to somebody else. I will slough it off and make excuses if I can't keep a promise to myself. I have a book that I keep every single day. It's it's a, a Franklin planner. I don't mean to be selling them. I just, most of you kind of know that they're pretty organized. And there's a column for for the to-dos for the day, and there's a second column right next to that where you can schedule them in if that's what you want to do, or where you can put down the appointments that you have to keep. And when it's on that, when it's in that planner, boy, I got to do it. Unless it's something for me, in which case, very often it's a check mark, which means I've done it. There is a little arrow pointing to the next day. I have things on there that have been pointing to the next day for weeks. Some of those things, more important than many of the things that I've done for others, because I told them I would. How much do you really trust yourself if, in fact, you know you don't keep your word to yourself? And if you don't trust you and you are the place in your life where God is, hmm? Put your faith in that power within you, in the God within you. If you have to have to make it more of a human than a power, then do that for now. You can break that habit later. Do what you need to do to connect to that power within you, to honor that power within you. And when it speaks its word, especially to you, follow through. There's something golden at the end of that, if you will do it. Now, my work is going to come to an end if I don't clean my desk. But there's a purpose in cleaning my desk. Or it wouldn't be on the list. It serves a purpose, not just to unclutter, which in itself is a very good thing. But I find sometimes when those things keep coming up for me, <clears throat> it's because something I've been looking for is on the desk that I couldn't find. Now, my desk isn't terrible, but it's not the way I would like it to be. And until it is the way that I would like it to be, it's going to keep showing on that list until I take care of it which now that I've told all you about it, I will probably do this afternoon. So that if someone asks me on Wednesday, I can say, yeah, it's clean. And it probably will be. The point is this, keep your words to yourself because you are a place where God is. And would you not keep your word to God? If it's really not that important, then take it off your to-do list and start talking about it. 
if it really is that important, then recognize how important you are. You are a place where God has shown up. I don't think it gets much more important than that. Keep your word to God. Keep your word to yourself. And then keep your word to others. Most I think we keep our words to other our word to others out of guilt. We don't want to feel bad. And yet you will not keep your word to yourself and feel bad. So straighten that out. Place you on your priority list. Nancy says you've been reading her list. <laughs> Hey, Nancy, if I've been reading your list, then um, how's your closet? Because that's right after the desk in my book. I'm going to fix that. The closet may be not done by Wednesday. <laughs> it's a big job. <laughs> Cat just said Christmas. I'll have it done before Christmas. Oh. I have to be able to find my Christmas sweaters. If I don't clean out the closet, I'll never find them. Anything else? Um, this is fun. I love no, Q&A. Uh, okay. Dana says, I love the awareness that comes when something I don't understand me comes to my mind or mouth, and then I'm able to turn things around. Good girl. Good girl. And isn't that the greatest feeling ever? Ever? I don't think you've ever seen that. Okay. Well... Dana says, I love the awareness that comes when something I don't understand, when I something I don't want, need, or claim comes to my mind or mouth, and I am able to turn things around. I'm sure you heard that. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Most of you have heard my story about when I was in Huntington Beach. I had an appointment in Huntington Beach um, at 5.30, I think. In my memory, it was my mastermind group was meeting. That may or may not be completely accurate, but it's been a few years. Anyway, I had to go someplace else down the 405 freeway for an earlier appointment. And I did that and I was on my way back and realized that I was on that freeway at 5.15. You know how I realized it, don't you? Because all of a sudden all the traffic stopped. All of us. And there were a lot of us. And I found myself saying out loud, Nobody else in the car. Out loud, I'm never going to make it. I am never going to make it on time. How could I possibly make it on time? I am still 12 miles away, but this traffic isn't moving at all. And then I heard myself. I heard myself say it. Luckily, I had said it out loud. That really helped. And I literally said, there's me saying that, and I don't say that anymore. And I thought, okay, how can I look at this differently? And I said, I know, instead of being like a half hour late, which is, looks like I'm going to be, I'm going to claim that I am no more than five minutes late. So I did. I am no more than five minutes late. In spite of all of this traffic, in spite of the, all this congestion, in spite of the fact that in this moment the cars are not moving, I am not going to be more than five minutes late. There. It's good to be new to new thought. It really is. So I said that. And within moments, the traffic started moving. And I swear there was a point at which, like the, like the river in the Bible, the traffic just opened. And I drove through. And I got to my appointment and I got out of the car and I walked into the restaurant where we were meeting and there was a clock right over the desk and it was 
35. And I took a deep breath and hit my forehead and said, I could have claimed I'd be on time. But I got exactly what I spoke. Five minutes late. See, little things like that. I'm with you, Dana. It's little things like that that make you realize how powerful this really is and how much it works. And if we overlook those things when they happen, then we have overlooked the miracles in our lives. Miracles are happening every single day, probably every single moment. But if we don't pay attention to them, if we don't recognize and accept them and claim them, then we don't get so many. They grow exponentially by our awareness of them. Be transformed by the renewing of your words. May your life be transformed by your awareness and your changing of your words, if that's what you need to do. Keep your word to yourself. Recognize when your word is so creative you cannot possibly ignore it. And then do more of it. Keep changing your words until they are picturing the life of your dreams. My techie person over there is just kind of looking at me. How are we doing? Oh, we still have a few minutes, don't we? Uh, Nancy says these are the words people want to hear. <laughs> and Steve Warren said he's lots of miracles. Yay! Yay. And Nancy has to clean her desk, too. <laughs> going to be a lot of us cleaning our desks this afternoon, I think. Oh, we can talk about it Wednesday night. But all, all of you who have cleaned your desks on Wednesday night, just put desk into the subject thing and we'll know what it means. And maybe I'll start on the closet. Maybe. I'll start on the closet. There, there's my word. I will start on the closet. Part of which would be simply picking what is laying out in the closet right now because he couldn't find anything to put on to be with you that I like the looks of. But then I did, and, and here we are. We'll be back here Wednesday. I'm I'm no cat's got that look on her face that says, tell them about Wednesday, so I'm gonna tell you about Wednesday. Most of you already know about Wednesday. So be here. Be here. Seven o'clock Wednesday, Pacific time. Some of you are coming from different time zones. I realize that. Um seven o'clock Pacific, you know how to translate that better than I do. Um, Wednesday nights for kind of an off the top of my head, more like what happens after I start talking. Um, and then again on Sunday. Most of our talks, almost all of our talks, are now up on YouTube. If you put my name in, you should be able to find them. They are, of course, also on all the ones that have taken place on Facebook are on Facebook. They are also on the Relevant Spirituality page and the Relevant Spirituality site. Or almost all of them are on the site. Not quite all of them yet. I have work to do there. There's another thing I have to do, should do, want to do. I want them up there. And, um, and then on YouTube, that was kind of a fun process, downloading them from Facebook and making them into mp4s which was a bigger deal than i expected and uh, and then loading them up to youtube so so i have my own channel now on youtube i'm not sure what that means but i have one and if you put in my name you will have some choices there it turns 
that other Marlene Morris's. Imagine that. I've actually kind of met one who's somewhere on the East Coast. Um, and Marin Morris shows up a lot, so make sure the L is in there. Um, but we're there. The talks are are all there, and I'm going to figure out how to. I think I just have to do it. Upload the talks that I have given at Unity as well. But first of all, I have to make sure that it's okay for me to do that. Um, I was on the Zoom church meeting of Unity Ventura this morning. That's always a joy. If you're in the Ventura area, um, once this all lifts, I invite you to to come see a service. They're they're Wonderful. They take place in in um, a very interesting theater, the Rubicon, here in Ventura on Main Street. And uh, Sunday mornings, it's it's us. Um, not there every Sunday, but if you check ahead of time, I'm there the first Sunday of every month when it's there. Um, I, I'm on their Zoom meeting the first Sunday of every month, as long as we're on Zoom. And I don't know how long that'll be, but I'm loving it. It's a great group of people. And um, and I think you'd enjoy meeting them, being with them. And I like plugging them. So if you want even more um, metaphysical thought, check in on, um, on the Ventura Unity website. And they lead you to their Sunday meetings and the Zoom connection. Do we? Okay. We always post it on my Facebook page. People post on my page gratefully <laughs> because I wouldn't necessarily remember to do it. I'm still not the techie I would like to be. Even when I took some courses, I took graphics courses. So <sighs> I'm just grateful for those people that can figure it out. Or for YouTube or Google, which are really good places for me to learn how to do something I have no clue about. So, here we are. A few minutes to go. Let's take one more minute together. Just in the sacred space that we have created. And we have. The spiritual center that we have created in our hearts and then connected to each other. And let us know that unlike a brick and mortar building, this is something that we can take with us wherever we go, can be with us wherever we are. And so we can move into this holy space anytime, anywhere. And let that remind us that we are not, are never alone. That God, our spiritual self, our divinity is right where we we are wherever we are, whenever we turn to it, there it is, waiting and ready. And so we commit ourselves today to speaking more kindly of ourselves and of each other and of the world in which we live and the world will yet create a world which is beautiful and kind and creative and spontaneously wonderful. A world in which we are whole and perfect. And complete. We have 
collectively spoken our words for that world. And we let it be so. And that's what it is. It has been a joy to be with you again. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night at 7, same time, same battle. And again, next Sunday. Have a wonderful week. Whatever it is you do, do it well. Whatever it is you say, say it well. Whatever it is you create, enjoy it.